Hey, what's up guys? So, um, I am working on a uh, Willys Jeep that's going to have three paratroopers in it, and I've already painted up uh, two of them, which were practice, kind of. And uh, this is one of them here. Um, so, I went ahead and painted the face on this guy, and I might still perk it up after uh, it cools down a little bit. And uh, I thought I'd go ahead and paint the uniform and share that with you guys. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the first colors that I mixed together on this were gray green and sunny skin tone. Uh, these are from Model Color. And I applied them with a, a large flat brush from uh, Army Painter. I just, it was a brush I just wanted to try and I wanted a brush that I could quickly uh, base coat things with. So I thought I'd give this a shot. It worked pretty well. Um, it doesn't flow as nice as the Windsor Newton, but uh, it's a synthetic brush and as long as you keep it clean it should work pretty well so after I applied that I took chocolate brown and then I started to uh, make swashes the British paratrooper camouflage is actually pretty tough to paint because it overlaps each other or overlaps itself in some places and on the other two figures that I painted I, I tried different things but this seemed to be the recipe that works for me and I did have reference photos up but I kind of just go off on my own tangent here because we're going to blend it all together in 35th scale and, he's, and the figure is seated so a lot of it kind of has to fold over on itself again but when you do a, a the British camouflage you really want to kind of plan it out in your head you know, figure, figure out for yourself what's going to look best for your figure Next I used military green and then I kind of went along the browns and I let it overlap in one or two places. I didn't want to go too crazy on the overlaps with this. I still wanted to keep some of the beige that I've created with the gray green and the sunny skin tone. And here I'm back to the uh, using a Windsor Newton and I'm just using the tip of the brush. Uh, if I want to do a wider swash, I'll flip the brush onto its side and use the ferro. Now I'll go back over with the chocolate brown and we'll make those swatches a little bit stronger. I'm mixing a little bit of black and put that in the lower corners of the jacket. I used English uniform on the collars. I already had it on the palette from painting the flesh tones. So the collars would kind of want to make a little bit different. So for the gloves, I used straight khaki. Also, I painted this figure on a toothpick, which I really don't recommend. Uh, he was kind of bouncing on me. and uh, But since I had three figures I had to paint, I thought, well, instead of you know using blocks of wood for these guys, I'll try something else. But uh, yeah, toothpicks aren't really the ideal <laughs> grip for your figure.
Here I'm painting the webbing and the web belt, and that's just, once again, straight khaki. I'm gonna mix in a little sunny skin tone with that khaki. And I brought it up just a little bit. The shadows, I'll just mix in that chocolate brown with the khaki. Now I made a wash. It's a two parts dark brown wash, one part black, two parts water. And this is what we're going to use to tone down the camo. And if you watch, what I'm doing is I'm not putting it all over the figure. I'm only putting it where I want it to go. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want the camo to be stark and change. We want it to look a little bit weathered. And this is a good way of kind of blending the three colors together and adding some, some wear and tear to the, to the parka. But once again, you're only putting it where you want it to go. So now I'm using military green, and since I used these are I used hornet heads on Bronco on a Bronco figure, so I actually used uh, green stuff to uh, and I made them uh, scarves basically, like the paratroopers would have those uh, uh, webbing scarves around their necks. So I kind of used that as a as a way to uh, improve the stick of the head to the body. On the helmet, I'll just start with straight military green and a little bit of black mixed in. So this is like two parts military green, one part black. I'll mix green and sunny skin tone once that dries. And now I'm gonna start highlighting on all the little bits. So the bits that are green, I'm gonna highlight on those and then once again, I'll go up to the helmet and I'll start doing highlights on the helmet as well. And I'm just using the, the side of the tip of the brush to touch on the webbing of the helmet. Now I'm doing the same thing with the beige color that I had mixed in sunny skin tone with it and just touching on everything. I'm sorry, this is the browns. So sunny skin tone, chocolate brown, and just touching on the highest points of where the brown is shown. And I'll go ahead and start using that same color and painting on the, uh, the Hessian tape on the helmet and mix in a little bit more sunny skin tone. I don't grab from different browns that I have on the palette. I think I grabbed from leather brown just then. No, sunny skin tone and khaki, and once again painting it back over the the khaki colors we laid down earlier, but this time going with more highlights. And then I'll take a chocolate brown and black 
and outline everything. And this is why I wish I had uh, a block because I couldn't grab the figure so I had to touch on them. But one or two finger touchings ain't, ain't gonna kill it. <laughs> As you can start to see, like that black and brown mix really helps to, to separate the items on the figure. Now I'm mixing black and green, I'm just kind of going in between all the Hessian tape and then going back and highlighting it if I lost anything. For the boots, these aren't going to be seen, they're going to be buried down in the Jeep, so I just paint them straight flat black. And for the spats, it's khaki and English uniform, I believe. With a little bit of chocolate brown. But once again, these aren't going to be seen. They're going to be stuck down inside the Jeep. So I'm not too worried about highlighting and, and shading these. I'm just kind of putting color on them. So for the trousers, uh, this is a recipe that I tried on the other two figures. And I think it worked really well. I started out with a mix of flat black and brown violet and this will be my base coat Now I've made a mix of brown violet and English uniform and I'll start putting this on the tops of the legs. I went ahead and threw in some English uniform on the spats. And I'm increasingly adding English uniform. Now I'm outlining the seams of the pants with the with the uh, with the black. I'm mixing a little English uniform and sunny skin tone. This gives us another color that we can kind of jump around with. I'm kind of touching on everything. And I even use some sunny skin tone to perk up his face a little bit. Uh, this is actually uh, base flesh. So if I, if you see me touching in the eyes, then it's usually base flesh. I'm gonna mix that together with the black brown. 
and it's kind of a gray, but it's dark enough that we can go ahead and throw shadows in between his fingers and separate the, the gloves from the arm. And I felt like his jacket was kind of blending in, so I used some English uniform and basic flesh. And it just kind of went where I had made a shadow before, went right next to it and created a highlight, make things pop a little bit more. Okay, so that's a look at how I painted up the British paratroopers. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.